Hi everybody and welcome to a quick overview of ProBuilder version 2.3. We just wanted to get a video out for this to let people see what's coming. This update is almost ready. Uh, we're really, really excited to get it out to everyone. It's a basically a complete rewrite of the UV and texturing system that had uh, lagged pretty far behind the uh, much more advanced geometry tools we keep adding in. So really excited about this. We also have the brand new GUI and we'll go into a bit of detail on this in the video. So first, for anybody new to ProBuilder, what is it? Uh, this is a tool that allows you to build and edit geometry right in the Unity editor. No need to go back and forth between Blender, Maya, Max, etc. You can just build everything right here in the editor. And of course, you generally want to use this for larger uh, items such as you know levels like this, uh, maybe some basic props and whatnot. You definitely want to be building your really finely detailed meshes in Max or Maya, ZBrush, etc. Those are what those are best at, and ProBuilder is best at building up your basic level geometry or just for prototyping. You know, it's really, uh, we have a lot of people who use it and love it just for building prototype geometry that they can then build the detailed items on top of. That can save you a lot of time, be really quick. So this entire level, just for example, was built every single bit of it within ProBuilder. Some parts probably could have been built better in Max, etc., but we really wanted to show it off uh, what you can do, um, at least on a fairly uh, simple but clean and nice looking level um, using ProBuilder. And this will be available for download to anyone. It also includes some awesome textures from Game Textures, uh, GameTextures.net, so be sure and drop by and give them a thanks. Uh, and you can see it in the Ultimate FPS new multiplayer demo. Uh, which was actually shown at Unite 2014 as well. So anyway, moving on, ProBuilder uh, 2.3. So here we have a new and much improved GUI system. You can now uh, instantly toggle between any of the element or sub-object modes. If you're used to 3D Studio Max, you'll think of them as sub-objects. Maya, I guess, is uh, elements. And we decided to go with that terminology. Um, it just seemed simpler in, in a couple of ways. So whenever you have a ProBuilder object selected, for example, let's grab this wall right over here, you'll have the new uh, object versus element bar at the top here. So this tells you what major mode you're in. There are now two major modes only, that is object and element. Object is just standard Unity editing, nothing fancy is going on. You can move, rotate, scale, um, all the basic stuff, and this allows you to um, keep the complex uh, editing options of ProBuilder separate from your general level work. So it's not going to conflict and create any um, you know, extra stress and worry for you while you're working. Uh, maybe this is just something that I have and I just have to know that while I'm working on things, there's the very smallest chance possible of anything breaking. Um, you know, so it's, it's the simplest mode possible. Object mode is that. Um, so anyway, I'll stop tangenting on that. Um, then we have element mode. You can click directly on the bar to swap between object and element mode if you like. Um, you'll notice once you click into that, now in the, uh, the elements, it's going to select the last element mode that you were in automatically. And here is where uh, ProBuilder really starts to do uh, its, its awesome work. So you have three different elements, vertex, edge, and face. And with an object selected here, I can click and see in face mode, you can select entire faces. And then you could move, rotate, or scale those. You can go into the vert mode. And then you can just the same move, scale, or rotate. All the same, just the same as in Unity. Again, we try to keep a lot of things or everything possible exactly the same as standard Unity conventions. So you don't have to learn anything extra. You know, we. Um, a lot of people say this, and we say it all the time as well, we really, really, really push for simple, intuitive, zero learning curve where possible. Um, so again, standard Unity convention here, nothing fancy happening. You can hold shift and drag select. You can unselect via that. You can click on single at a time. Everything is the same as in standard Unity. We do add a couple extra uh, nice items. For example, if you click on a face in either vertex or edge mode, it will still select. It's kind of hard to see in this large object. Try a smaller one here it automatically selects the entire face, which will then transfer over between the other modes. Uh, in edge mode, again, same thing, click on a face, we'll select the whole face. Edge mode has a lot of the more complex and, uh, and awesome features that we've been adding in recently. And this allows you to do um, essentially proper uh, edge loop modeling and such. So you can select multiple edges, 
and do things like connect them to add in new geometry. I'm going to break my light maps doing that in here at this point. Uh, that's okay, I suppose I can connect. Uh, you can select a face and delete it, and then, and again, forgive these light maps going a little crazy as I start deleting things. Uh, let's say I want to bring this out a bit. I can now just start holding shift and extruding, building out whatever it might be that I want to build. So very quick and simple. And of course I can select the entire face, extrude it in, pull that out, and so forth. And I'm creating some terrible geometry at the moment. Um, perhaps I want to do that so I have a proper area here. Um, that's another thing too. Uh, we've really worked on undos to make sure, and they've been pretty, uh, pretty strong in the past, but obviously that's always a, a item that can be tricky to get just right in any tool, especially something as complex as ProBuilder but we've put a lot of work into making sure that's always uh, up to task with especially the new um, undo uh, items and such within uh, Unity 4 and moving up to 5 as well. So again, edge modeling, make sure you take a look at all the options here. And this is really the next thing to look at before we get to, of course, the UV editing, the big um, awesome part of this update. Just a few more things on the GUI. Um, the GUI is now dynamic. So as you click between modes, you'll notice that it changes. So this way you're getting only the information you actually need and it's um, not taking up too much space, but it's also giving you all the information that is possible. So at any point in time when you have an edge selected or multiple edges or you're in vertex mode or edge mode, you are seeing every possible action that you can do on those edges and it keeps it, uh, its content and uh, context aware. So if you only have one edge select, selected, it doesn't allow you to, connect, uh, <laughs> to click the connect button, the bridge button, etc. Um, it's going to make sure it's just a smarter GUI helps you work through it as, you, as you're first learning and also keeps you from making mistakes that might air out, uh, et cetera. So a lot of good uses in there, a lot of, way that it's, a lot of ways that it'll help people uh, build quicker uh, as they're working. Uh, quick last thing on the GUI, of course, you can click back on the um, element to exit it again. If you are in an element mode, you can hit escape. It will always take you all the way back to the top level object mode. So time to look at that UV editor that we've been uh, making a lot of hype about and we are really, uh, really looking forward to people using this and sending us feedback that we've had a lot of beta testing and so far people are really liking it. I know on this map it was crucial to, uh, to building it and setting up the UVs properly. So now we have right here in the uh, tools section of the GUI, you can click on UV editor and pop open the brand new UV editor here. And this will work uh, very similar, again, to using 3D Max or Maya or any other major 3D uh, modeling tool. And then it gives you many of the similar functions and a nice, easy to use uh, UV space here. So if I select, uh, let's find a fairly simple object. Maybe we'll go back to this wall here. I know it's a pretty simple item. So here we have all the UVs for this object. Now since this has um, standard tiling UVs on it, right now you can see that it's tiling quite largely uh, within, or showing up, showing up quite large within the UV space here. You have the, uh, if I deselect this, you have the zero to one space shown with the blue lines here. You can see that it's tiling quite a bit there. So first of all, we've, I think, found, or I hope, a pretty good way to merge the old auto UV method with the new manual UV method. And that is, everything starts as simple auto UVs. So as you're building and such, your UVs will automatically take care of themselves, nothing for you to do. And of course, UV2s for light mapping are also completely taken care of, uh, zero work for you there. And we will be adding in an extra mode uh, so that you can customize your UV2 channel as well later on, and possibly even more channels if you'd like to as well. So UV2s are taken, for you, uh, taken care of for you and regular UV channel as well in the auto mode. And then you can switch into the manual if you really want to uh, do some extra work on that. But take a quick look at auto for anyone who's still new to this. Um, in auto mode, if I, let's say, zoom in on a portion of this, your UVs, again, are taken care of for you. At any point, you can turn on the uh, lock to scene view option here. So now if I select a face, and we'll see if I can find the spot where I can see this well enough, maybe turn off the lighting, I can move the UVs around. 
or rotate them or scale them. Very simple to do, and it's all going to continually tile just fine, and you can do that with any number of faces at once. Uh, you have a bunch of other uh, options within here, including world space, texture groups. Um, you can see them all directly here, as well as a few other tiling options. So these are the standard old-school auto-tiling methods, and we don't want to go into this too much since we ho uh, we're hoping people move away from these, actually, to the new manual methods uh, once you're working on more complex items, that is. For standard work, of course, um, or if you're just prototyping, the auto UVs are going to work great for you. It means you don't have to do any work at all. They'll just look good. So what happens when you have something that you want to do a little more uh, complex work on, or you want to look ex uh, or finesse the exact UVs, or you have something pretty complex? Uh, that's where we get into the manual, uh, manual UV mode. So with any UV or multiple selected, you can click on Convert to Manual. And now you'll see in the UV editor, it turns orange. So this tells you that these UVs are actually manual UVs versus the blue ones are still using the auto. And once again, the GUI palette in the UV editor is dynamic. So you can see the actions here are changing and it tells you whether or not these are auto or UV and gives you the options for each. If I select two different types, it'll just give you the option to convert all of those to manual or all of those to auto. So you're never uh, confused on what you're using. It tells you it's mixed and gives you the options just for what you have selected. Again, um, trying to build a nice, smart GUI that really works for everything and everyone. So in the manual mode, we have a couple cool options here. Um, obviously, first of all, some ways to protect the UVs out as a planar or box. You can have multiple UVs selected when you do this. Or multiple faces and it will automatically do that for you. Um, you can select the entire island or the face, so island would be uh, just a chunk that it's connected to or any UVs sewed together. You can weld, collapse, split the UVs, a lot of cool stuff in this. Again, we'll leave this later on for when we have a full tutorial time um, for the real release and get into the depths of all the, all the bits you can use on here. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is the very cool, um, we're still trying to decide to call it auto stitch or super stitch method. Basically, you click on any face that's a manual UV, and then hold control and click on any other face that's adjacent to it and also a manual UV, and it will automatically add it on. So essentially, it automatically stitches it together, like you can see here, and so continues it along perfectly. And this will work with... Um, unlimited uh, complexity, you can simply click along and it's going to add it and stitch it right together instantly, uh, perfectly. So I wish I had a little better uh, item here to show this on, but again, not a lot of time in this video. I don't want to take too much time here, so we'll look into that in more uh, complex tutorials. But just keep that in mind, it's really, really going to make it simple if you have fairly complex UVs to quickly put that together um, without a lot of, not a lot of work on your part, or you can simply select them all and just do a box unwrap, etc. So a lot of cool options coming in that, and of course we'll be adding many, many more as well. Just a quick note, if at any point you want to revert to auto UVs, of course you can select, say, just these two, convert back to auto, now it's back to regular auto mode. It's going to tile automatically as you move the verts around, etc. It's all right back. And then you can just go back and forth at any point as you need to. So again, trying to make it nice and simple, easy to work between uh, depending on what you're used to and how complex you want to get with your UV editing. So I think that's it for this quick, quick intro video. We don't want to get too in-depth and waste too much time. Um, Thanks for watching, and definitely if you already are a ProBuilder user, make sure and get on the ProBuilder beta group. Just send me an email, or uh, I'll make sure you register first, and you'll be automatically added in. Uh, we love to have people helping out by testing out the betas. That way you can get in on the latest before it's even uh, fully released. And also, you know, get us some feedback so we can make everything better, constantly update and improve uh, what we're creating and make sure it's really working for you guys out there. Uh, building this level was a lot of fun and really taught us a lot about um, where we think ProBuilder should go essentially and where we want it to keep moving forward to. Um, working on a lot of complex items it really became clear especially that the UV editor was really important um, and it was great to have while putting this together. Um, also along with that make sure you check out the awesome Ultimate FPS demo. Um, they are having a full new multiplayer version that is really, really slick. Uh, we had it Unite 2014 running with a guy in uh, Sweden, Korea, Atlanta, and then in Seattle on the terrible convention Wi-Fi, and it was running great with uh, four or five players in there. 
So um, something awesome, che awesome to check out there. And of course, again, this entire level will be downloadable. So you can check it out and see how it's put together, edit it up yourself. Um, yep, and that's about it. So be sure to uh, keep your eye out for any updates and such, especially as the 2.3 update starts to, uh, or as it finally will come out to the asset store very soon, uh, just drop by www.procore3d.com. Um, and if you're looking for even more detailed info, you can view the uh, currently in beta documentation at procore3d.com slash docs slash probuilder slash pb dash beta.html. Um, I'll make sure that's written down in the comments. Um, so again, thanks for looking and we'll uh, look forward to uh, everyone's input as they give this a try. And you know, don't forget to, if you're just checking things out to begin with, you know, take a look at Prototype, currently free for all of September. So Prototype is the small version of Pro Builder, but has really the core awesome stuff all built in. So you can give it a quick try and really start to uh, get a feel for it. Okay, so 15 minutes, this is way too long. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the future videos.